Sure, yeah, your face! <laughs> like an arrow quickly finding its mark and heading straight for- Isabella! <gasps> Ashton! <gasps> no! Oh! Oh no! Ash? No! What? Wake up, Buttercup. Oh. This isn't real. This can't be happening. Dude, you did it! See, I want to take pity on Luke, but I can't. Like, I, I really can't. Hey, Internet, it's Jessica, and welcome back to the letter. So we're going to continue where we left off after Luke just murdered Hana and kind of kind of regretted it. I don't know, he's having like an eternal crisis because Takako is kind of talking in his ear to be like, yes, do it. And then he's at the same time, he's like, oh my god, I just killed my wife and our unborn ch child, or children, I should say, because they had twins. So, uh, let's see what happens now. It's not our sobs that I hear, but his, hers, theirs. I'll never know, will I? I've killed them by my own doing. I've ended it all, even before anything has begun. Their blood drips from my hands, pooling at my feet, lapping at my ankle, like the cold, suffocating embrace of my sins. They creep up my limbs, slow and unhurried, twisted and turning. Up and up it goes, until nothing but a sharp, guttural cry escapes from my mouth. Then, all at once- We would have been so beautiful. Jesus! I choke back a scream and wake up in cold sweat. With my heart pounding in my ears, it only takes a while to remember where I am. Oh! Oh, interesting! So we're still doing this where there's, like, Takako sleeping in the bed with him. In the dark and cold of the room, one can't fault me for feeling ill at ease. It isn't as bright as the penthouse, and the renovations did little to change how old it feels. But we've been here for less than a week, it'll take more than a bit of time to adjust. It's hard to feel cozy, though, when I'm bloody freezing, nudging the lump of fabric next to me, I sigh. Uh, it's cold. Don't hug the sheets, Hana. She always did this, though. It hardly bothers me growing up. I was lucky to have something to use as a mattress. Wait, does he not remember that she's dead? I'm not one of the who grew accustomed to Egyptian cotton with a thread count of 800. Besides, the warmth that Hana ensues on her own is usually enough to keep me sleeping through the night. The temperature tonight must be something else with how chilly it is right now. It takes me a while. Then I remember. It can't be Hana. So, who is it? The horrible image of Hana's cold corpse lying underneath the sheet comes to mind. Let it be anything but that. And in true, they're seeking warmth and shelter from the cold, dreary night. That's kind of weird that they would go into your bedroom and be like, I'm cold and I'm homeless. I'm just going to go slip into your bed now. I made sneaky in with a mischief in mind, a hired hitman that was out for my head. Even the last would be better than finding her there. I can't fight of the man with a gun. I can say I can't say the same about the sight of her dead eyes reminding me of what I've done. The smart thing to do here is to get out really. But a nagging curiosity aside, I have to know what they're here for, and more importantly, what they've seen. Dude, I would not! Oh my god, what if they've seen what's in the other room? Why linger? Do they hope to blackmail me and this is a sick way of sticking around until they can talk to me? If I leave now, they might as well. Just the act of trespassing alone could cause enough for punishment. Whether that punishment leads to a swift execution remains to be seen. There's no signs that they've heard me, nor have they shown any sense of moving where they lie. I, and he, this is where he's gonna get the knife and then it's the ghost, right? Yeah, okay. But I don't like much the idea of people sw swarming in here, especially now with a dead body in the other room. The fewer people that know about it, the better. That always is a good rule for this sort of thing. I'm on my own then. But what's the worst that could happen, right? What's the worst that could happen, right? It's not like a freaking demon is it under the sheets or anything. I grab a fistful of the sheets and throw them aside. Oh! Nothing. Still nothing. Cool. All right. So this is when Zach comes to the door to be like, is everything okay in there? Though the guilt weighs heavy upon me, I have to. Need to push it aside and proceed as necessary. Emotions play no part in this. Regret will not keep me out of jail if I don't hide my crime one way or another. Oh, it should be easy. Just hide the body, no? Drain the body, crush the teeth, burn off her fingertips, and mar her face past point of recognition before chopping up the bo body up. Oh my god! I mean, he's done this like multiple times, but Jesus! There will be plenty of options after that incineration, feeding it to animals, dumping it into the ocean. Oh, she would like that last one, wouldn't she? Of course, there's always an option to let her decompose and become fertilizer in my daffodils. That really isn't a big issue, though. This whole murder business just ruins a good Sunday morning, does it not? 
Oh my god, it's so messed up. Is that what he does with his daffodils? Is that where he buries, like, the people he kills? He, they become fertilizer for his daffodils? Oh my god. Hana, my dear Hana. Till death do us part. And you must part. Forget about her. Yet, even in death, I cannot let you go. My hands still shake at the very idea that I have your blood on them. My insides feel numb and afire because of the sins I have committed. My lips quiver as I fight off the urge to cry up prayers and apologies, in the hopes that they would be enough to bring you back. But I know this is no fairy tale. But I'm not going to wake up, and the slumbering princess with a kiss, true love or otherwise, no sentiment or good intention will change the cruel reality of life. Even if miracles do exist, I do not think they would happen for a man such as myself. The past cannot be changed. I must deal with the consequences to come, regardless of what the person who had just walked in. And he always has an opinion. I think murder would ruin a sane person's mood no matter the day or time. Continue mouthing off and there'll be a second one, Shrakin. I've killed for less in the past. I've been soft, complacent. God, Lou scares Those me. Those things need to change. She made me soft. Over the years, I've been told that marriage has made me a kept man. Of course, people stop saying that after I show a, a fool who thought that disrespecting my wife would get him anywhere. Not that she's gone, though. Well, who knows? I mean no disrespect. Excuse the murmurings of the insane, yes? But I have every confidence and every dread that you will go through with it. However, about the madame, how shall we proceed? I'm sure it has come to you that this will need more attention than the others who have gone under our care. The chance of her remaining being found is slim if we do things properly, as we have done in the past. But the chances of her disappearance going unnoticed? Blo not bloody likely. That's true, she's a popular celebrity and it's like all of a sudden she's gone. That's gonna look very suspicious. She is, was, Hana. Whether she was Hana Evans or Hana Wright, she pract she's practically Lexborn's royalty. Her disappearance will cause quite a stir, and who will be suspected number one? Me, of course. After that public blow-up she had at the party? This won't be as easy as, say, killing an ordinary accountant who looked, in the, who looked into the numbers a bit too thoroughly, or an attorney who hopes to get in my way. For now, I need to have a plan to, at the very least, hide the body and cover her disappearance. That's why I have the rest of the staff sent away except for Strokin. I suppose we can't just sweep this under the rug, can we? No. What about a magic trick, then? Can we pull off a sleight of hand? Now you see her, now you don't. Misdirection. Clever. You could blame the butler. I would not mind retirement. A nice try, but I'm not letting you go. I still own you until I see fit. There's no need for you to take the fall. Not when there are plenty of others I can pinpoint as the culprit. Why even make it murder? I don't think turning into kidnapping story will work, but Hana was social enough that she has plenty of suitors. She could have been a bit too friendly with one of them. That would be a pot calling the kettle back. But she might have, if she is falling out of love with me, she might have wanted to leave me for another. Someone else who caught her eye, her interests. Just our very visitor this morning, in fact. <gasps> what are you doing? He's gonna pin the murder on Zack? What? People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Oh my god, and the worst thing is, Ashton is dead. No one can help him. And adding to the fact that Zachary has been in trouble with the police because of misdirection. People just assume he was the bad guy because he's black. Remember he said that in his freaking chapter? Oh my god. Very funny. So, Grand Director, do you want to tell me what Blue Fonsi is all about? Oh my god. I was talking with Zachary. Luke is such a garbage person. He was a perfect gentleman, Luke. I can't say the same for you as of recent. Look, Luke. Nothing will happen. You have to relax. It was just a friendly chat. Is this why he's here? Unlikely. But her? Is that why she pulled that fucking stunt in public? Did she really not love me anymore? Is it because of the photographer? Or is it someone else? How many others could be at fault for her change of heart? This is all her fault. He's she gonna do it. Had you and she let herself stray. What if we said that she eloped? Ran away with another man. I'd sooner believe she was killed by the Anselm Butcher than think she fled with another man. But it could work. The masses will eat up such gossip. We can fake evidence, signs that will point to her traveling with a companion. Though, if I may be a bit honest, I loathe to speak ill of her or create rumor. What if it isn't a rumor? What if there was someone? Why else would she act out like that? The falling out would be the best excuse to leave me. 
or coming out as the victim. <laughs> Whatever the case, it'll put me under less scrutiny. The police will investigate if it's a murder or a kidnapping or a sudden disappearance. But they won't really bother with marital and relationship issues, will they? They are not minors. And I suppose the police will not bother unless you file a case. They have more problems than a love affair. It would be best to consult someone who knows the law a bit more intimately. Your lawyer, yes? Yes, but he's away on a holiday, enjoying the beaches on some back-end country or some such. Somewhat called... Philippians or something? <laughs> he told me he'll be back on the 2nd of November. Wouldn't that be a bit too late? If we have to wait that long, we can consult someone else. The chef inspector might be willing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yo, he's gonna do it too, because remember, the chief inspector is technically working with Luke, and he did tell Ashen, get off the case. Like, don't go investigating Luke right anymore. Oh my god, Zack is screwed! Yes, I suppose I could ask Lee. He's an idiot, but he's an idiot who studied the law. But if I ask questions, he'll pry, and I like to not give too much away. The trick is to keep secrets is to have a few people as possible to know about it. Take a few people down and put them in their graves if I have to. At least the lawyer is paid to believe I'm innocent and won't be nosy about the whole thing. And, re and really, it's just because. I don't trust him with this. He's probably busy with that wife of his. If she's still even in the city. Who can I even trust, really? You can trust your most faithful servant. For I am the only one who truly loves you, my prince. A person's loyalty stops where greet, uh, greet stands. They all bow down to a curry flavor, faking smile, and attempting my every whim, expecting approval and gifts in exchange. And this is all and this is all well and good for me. Let it not be said that I am not a generous prince, but it, it is those who I reign over the fear that I must watch out for. People like Harvey Lee fell under both of those. He catered to me shamelessly so that I can aim so I can aid him with his wishes in turn. And when he found out that he was in too deep, I could leash him and let uh least he get away least he get in my way. Sure, I will say jump and he will ask how high, but he is spineless sh he's a spineless little shit. The moment he thinks he sees the opportunity to turn the tables on me, he'll take it. Bribery and blackmail can go so far. One needs to make the other person bend, but take care not to have them broken. If they believe they have nothing to lose, that's when they retaliate. At the very least, he'll try to use the knowledge and try to gain leverage over the equal grounds on me. And if it does that, I'll be forced to kill him. I don't like letting go of my toys because they decide to be stupid. Handling idiots can be so tiring, no matter how many of them die off. Another three can be found within the so within the stone's toss. It's it's best to make use of them one way or another until it's decided that they need to be deleted from the gene pool. It won't do to use a story until we're certain it's believable. After all, it's the first time I've become a widower. Until then, keep the others away from her body. Standing up to leave, I grow still at the sound of shattering glass. A dampness leaks into my shoes, has red stains that the hem of my pants and my socks. I forgot I was having wine. Huh. Go clean that up and leave me be. I've already had the other staff take the day off. I don't want to see hide a hair of you unless I call. There's no peace that just I there's no peace to be had just yet, apparently. The other man is quick to follow and quick to speak up that there aren't any witnesses such disrespect to hear what has be, has be what has to be said? You do realize it has been 12 hours. Rigor mortis is already set in. Any longer and then it will start smelling like a sewer. I will not be able to do anything about that without removing the corpse itself. In three days time, the smell will have seeped into the walls and you will have to replace those to even get rid of it. If you're not keen about disposing the body just yet, at the very least we can put it in a freezer. I suppose a chest freezer for the wine cellar wouldn't raise too many questions. And, look, I don't want to think about this right now. I don't care if you have to fill the room with potpourri or douse all the walls with perfume. Go order a freezer and have it delivered today, even. Just make sure it doesn't stink up the place until we get rid of the body. Make it happen. This is your problem now. If you are not to attend to it, will you be reporting to work, then? You've already cancelled your appointments for the day. But some are still insistent that you keep to your original meetings. The board of directors are especially adamant about talking about the hotel and- I put up my hands to stop the man from talking before he goes any further. Why, I can already feel the migraine building up from his worrying. It's part of his job, I understand, but I said I was going to have the day off. So be assured I am going to have the bloody day off. <laughs> Goodness, no. I think I deserve a break. A day or two. 
Or three without being surrounded by complete dunderheads. Director Han can handle those busybodies for a while, can't he? For fuck's sakes, I can have the week off if I want, and my finances will not be the worst for wear. My company and the businesses aren't going to kneel over and die just because they decide to take a leave for a bit, right? It's not like I'm the only co competent businessman there. I mean, at least I hope not. Before there are any more protests, I pull my mobile out of my pocket and toss it his way. By the time he catches it, I'm already halfway out the door. I'm going out for some fresh air. If anybody calls, tell them they can sort off and bother me another day. Do I even deserve to talk to her now? It feels wrong to do so after what I've done. Not because I have blood on my hands, no, that's nothing new. But when it's her, when I killed my lovely Hana, I don't even need to worry about becoming my father anymore because I certainly much, much worse. Damien never killed Eleanor. He never had her blood on his hands. Staring at the flowers offers me no safety from the reality. The peace I came out here is short-lived when my mind betrays my guilt. But I'm a stubborn fool who sets it his ways, and I refuse to get up and go back into the house just yet, even if there's no real point in staying in the dirt. I... I think those flowers look it's beautiful. The girl! To the cocko! Loneliness casts shadows in your eyes and sharp lines on your face. I see a man who is thinking of the woman he loves. Well, the dialogue's different, so it's a little bit less creepy, but it doesn't change the fact that this is Takako, so... You miss her. You regret. Uh... Though I cannot fathom why. She did not deserve you. With the money and power I have, it's no big surprise that there's a target painted on my back. Who are you? Who sent you? What do you want? How do you know about my mother? Your mother? No. I speak of the woman you wed. Her death was a blessing. Oh, and then he's gonna be like, oh my god, someone knows about the murder. But I don't know if this is any better. I can feel the blood leaving my face. We have sent the others away for this exact reason, to give us some time to cover up her disappearance, her corpse even. But if she knew about it, well, she has, been, she has to be taken care of. What? How did you- Without drawing too much attention to it, I reached for the mobile in my pocket. One press would all it take to call the other man here, so we can get rid of the pest. I do it myself, but I'm unarmed, near defenseless. But my phone isn't here. I'm going out for some. He gave it to. Uh, if anybody mm. calls, tell them they can sort off and bother me another day. Of course, of all the times for me to ditch the bloody thing, but I should be able to take care of one woman, right? There's nobody but Johans and I on the property, far removed from the village and the rest of society. A fist to the throat, a quick twist to the neck, a blade to the jugular, Jesus. Though, forget the last one, unfortunate for me, I don't have a knife either. But, I look back at her, and fr I freeze a place. Is something the matter? <laughs> you look a fright. <laughs> Is something the matter? Yeah, your face. <laughs> what? The fuck? I try to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. Please do not torment yourself. You have nothing to worry about. I would never harm you. This home still needs its lord, our prince. Come, my lord. The house beckons. Well, that was different. Gone with the beautiful woman and in her place is a grotesque witch. This monster, surreal and horrifying. That's it, I've gone mad. Driven crazy by guilt for the sins I've committed. And this devil that the, would torment me for all eternity. But even the idea that is still a dream, a nightmare, doesn't stop me from flinching away at her touch. Definitely does not stop me from breaking into a run. I can still feel, feel her eyes on me as I run back to the house. But I refuse to acknowledge and let alone look back. All I need to do is get away from here and make sure she stays away. The hairs on the back of my neck stand at the end of the mere thought of that woman. I don't know if it was the trick of the light, but I don't think I was imagining things. And though he might think me a lunatic, I can only go on. Well, she... she was this thing. <laughs> A monster. A witch. I know how it sounds. I sound like... I, okay, fuck. It sounds like I've gone off my rocker with all that's happened. I, I expect to hear disregard, concern for my mental state, and maybe even empty platitude relating to my guilt. But instead, the other man grows deathly silent and a look of... a thoughtful look on his face. I would normally say that seeing hallucinations is a normal human experience. Even if this does not sound like a bereavement hallucination. But the woman you described is familiar. I've seen her before, in the mansion. Oh. Glimpses. So Johans has seen her. Is she one of ours, then? You must know her name now that you know what she looks like. I thought at first that her name may have merely slipped my mind. I've asked the head housemaid to reprimand her, for she was always loitering about when I saw her. But the old woman confirms. 
We do not have anyone fitting the description under our employ. So what I saw, what you saw, what was that? I don't understand. Explain, Shuriken. Please tell me I'm not going mod. We will have a head count of the female staff in the morning. And I'll assign stricter security protocols when the staff returns. It's better we rule things out before jumping to conclusions. I will have to check for tampering as well. Tampering? Psychotropic drugs to start off with. Perhaps in the water supply. I suggest you not worry yourself about it. You are unharmed. That is what matters right now. If it makes you feel any better, I'll stand guard outside for the night. No, that does not nothing to make you feel better. That one was a hallucination, a walking nightmare. What could a guard do to stop her from appearing before me once more? And if she comes into my dreams? The sickly sweet scent wafting from the nursery has kept me awake through most of the night. It's intoxicating and nauseating in equal parts. The body has yet to be disposed of. Mostly my fault. I have too much to take into account before I rush to a decision. Though perhaps this whole ordeal is being made complex by my sleep-addled brain. I can't be bothered to rise from the bed when the sun, with what little there seems to be today, peeks through the curtains. I don't want to handle any of it. Not Hana's body, not the security, not Kylie's visiting. Right now, all I want to do is actually get some sleep. Still, the thought of that woman from yesterday and the danger that she presented was enough to keep me from even trying. So suffice to say, I'm not very happy that anyone would dare separate me from my true love, the bed. The rain that has started sometime during the night didn't help the mood. Okay, maybe it's just helped a little. The strange sunny weather has been nice and all, but for it to return, it should feel like it's a good sign of things to come. Perhaps things will settle back to normal and crazy drama has gone on lately will die down. You must have been really rattled by what happened yesterday. And you aren't even the slightest bit bothered. Truly. Not even the slightest bit worried. I was worried. But I realized that it's not my life in danger, is it? <laughs> Johans does not care. My worrying will not help matters. No. No. Oh, Kylie's still coming here? Oh, no. Tio, where is Tia? Um... Is she still sleeping in bed again? Is she gonna join us later? I'll be lying if I say I'm not worried about going on with this line of questioning. I am honestly not expecting her to ask about her godmother. For all that Hana was actually a godparent, she wasn't too fond as she is of me. For the moment, paranoia fills my mind. It's suspicious of her to ask about a dead woman for no reason. I do realize this is ridiculous to think a child is to threaten me. Her father might be putting her up to it to find dirt on me. My mind supplies. I'm not too disillusioned to think that the people working under me are actually loyal to an extent. I can't stop myself from being defensive. What do you care? You've never asked for her before. Mama's been asking about her. She hasn't visited for a while. There's a shrug and some sense of her words. If she doesn't relieve some of the tension from me, nothing else I will. I don't know where she is, Munchkin. She's probably off somewhere doing grown-up things. Mm, that makes sense. She does a lot of boring grown-up stuff. There's always a boring grown-up party. Well, at least she's not being like, is she like... Hey, what's that smell in the house? Is Tia still asleep? I want to give her this pretty drawing I made for her. And I know that can't be helped. They don't know where the, the they don't know where to cross. Oh my god, they don't know where to cross the line out of genuine and innocent curiosity. And yet that doesn't stop me from snapping. Tia isn't here, all right. So where is Tia? She's not anywhere that I know of. Probably at another party, shaking hands and all that. But she's coming home soon, at least, right, Tia? Enough, you little brat. Can we just? I know, I don't know where Hannah is, is the official excuse for her disappearance is looked into. It's easier to calm ignorance, the lack of liability if foul play is ever suspected. There would be no m mens, mens rea or actus reus if I spend the whole affair and make myself the clueless bystander. It'll be easier to manipulate the story if I remove myself from it, which way, whichever way we choose to deal with this mess. But I've been blindsided by the interrogation of a child, whispers in my ear conspire. Silence her. End her. Oh my god, kill her! I have no- I have to shake my head to clear away the thoughts. She didn't deserve my anger for her such innocent questions. Because she's just a kid. This is Kylie for fuck's sakes. I don't need to silence her. I Let's have to- Let's just have fun, alright? I'm so sorry, Kylie. Please don't cry. I, I didn't mean to. I raise both my hands in an unthreatening manner, trying to pl placate her, only for her to step away, wide-eyed and terrified. This look on her face just crushes something in me. She doesn't let me say anything more than that before she runs away crying about wanting to call her father, about wanting to go home. Her crayons and toys strewn about forgotten. Okay, so we're viewing again the memory fragments that I got. 
and she nearly drops her tray as she enters the lady's bed bedchambers. The lady is being taken against the wall like a common street whore. The man is not her lord, her prince, but she is not a station that will allow her to judge. That doesn't keep the shock from her features or from her lady, voice. I brought the t <gasps> My apologies! Her voice is small, su subdued, and shy. Though the lady needs no words to express her displeasure as her face turns from one of pleasure into anger and ac accusation. Her glares burn, force and scalding. If looks could murder, the servant girl would be dead where she stands. All the while her lover still moves in and out of her, okay, uh, either unaware of the audience or enjoying the act even more because of it. Oh my god, we're getting a glimpse of all of the things? Okay, cool. My heart feels like it's seizing in my chest. Like it's being squeezed and pressured won't stop until it Are bursts. Are you truly storming off over some hearsay? Be sensible! What you did, it is... It is... There are no words. You bring disgrace to this family. This rotten noble standing in front of me is not the cousin I grew up with. This is not the lady I fell in love with. She would never do such unspeakable things, Charlotte! I bring disgrace. I bring disgrace? I am not the idiot who's running off in the middle of the night. You promised, Edward. You gave me your word. Don't you dare turn your back on me. I swear to you, if you step one foot out of these lands, mark my words, Edward, I will. What? What is it you swear? Will your men steal me away? Defile me too, like what you did to yourself? There is an undercurrent of fear, I'm in danger, my head screams at me, and there is hurt, a deep burning shame that I can feel on my woman's behalf. Looking at her on its own is a chore I cannot bear. Whispers and accusations fill every crevice of my head, ringing and echoing sound like a terrible case of tinnitus. They stare, they stare, gazes filled with judgment and disgust, even before the beloved lady has spoken, she's already condemned. It's a horrid woman! I beg the court for justice! Who knows what this devil's bride is capable of? She has already bewitched my love, my betrothed. I just cannot bear to think of what she has done to him after. Or oh, what else she may do to our people if we let her live. Blood takes this woman's hands, and I deserve to be repaid in kind for that which she has taken from me. There is nothing but her. Uh, there is nothing for her but death, and she knows this. Her silence says as much. One after another, they come at me, an unending flood of threats to sweep me away from what it feels like an eternity. Each one to show both the joy and suffering for those who have called this mansion their home. Each new scene is like a hammer to the head, threatening to crack my skull and split it to two. I can feel every little emotion in the blurring images that present itself in my head. I feel a part of these, like I lived through them, though I know that is not possible. All their anger burns through me, that much is evident, but the pain, the pain is so much more. And all above it are the whispers. The voices calling, luring, until one image emerged in vivid contrast with the other. When there is a shout of joy, my eyes snap open, looking for the culprit. That's when the whole room just changes. Everything is the same, yet everything isn't. Oh, okay. It's the same thing that we saw earlier. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to end this episode right here. So that was interesting. Kind of explained what happened with some of the memory fragments that the real reason Charlotte called her a witch and burnt her alive at the stake, like the stuff that Rebecca found, is because she caught her sleeping with another man that wasn't her fiancé. And the fiancé believed... Takako, but I don't know what their relationship is like if like Takako I know Takako was in love with him like a Eduardo or whatever his name is But Edward isn't in love with her or he is I don't know what's going on there I guess we're gonna find out a little bit later But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of letter remember to leave a like Let me know in the comments what you think and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button So you know when I upload the next episode of the letter. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one Bye! What? You're here? Finally, we meet oh, in flesh. Oh, he's here! Oh my god, Yours he's here! He's exposed indeed. I'm naked, can you see that? Jesus! Creepy. And sometimes that brings people together in a not so cute way. Here are six terribly awkward romances in video games. Number six, Cole and Elsa.